James Blunt is James the Wine Guy. This beautiful wine head is Early Mountain Foothills Red Blend 2013 Vintage. Stay tuned for this review. So Virginia is a fantastic region that I think is getting, you know, through hard work and effort, by the way, uh, it's getting its uh, accolades. Now it's a region that I think is getting its accolades because I think it really does have something that it's doing quite well. A number of varieties, actually a great breadth and depth of varieties. It's known for Cabernet Franc, it's known for its Viognier, but beyond that, there's a lot more. In addition to that, it's probably the best way of saying that. I think for me, this is a fantastic producer where I'm really enjoying uh, the execution of these two Bordeaux varieties. So let me bring this a little closer, very contemporary label and uh, nicely done. So 2013 vintage again, Foothills. Now this is a blend of 64%, well, you see that right there, 64% Merlot and 36% uh, Cabernet Franc. Look at that ABV, 12%. Now that does matter in terms of, um, you know, I try not to throw all wines under the wine uh, ABV bus, so to speak, alcohol by volume bus, proverbial bus, but I think it's really important to, to really distinguish, notice, make notation. Now, at a lower percentage, I think um, the idea is, and often is true, depends on the variety, of course, that uh, there's some nuances that come through, some characteristics that might not come through on a higher percentage level. And uh, I think that's a really interesting thing because you know you cannot always, as a producer, say, I want a 13.5%, I want a 12.75%. Uh, it's just not possible. It's what nature gives you on a vintage by vintage year. I use that term specifically because that's why we use vintage. Every year is different. Now for me, 12% ABV represents a really unique opportunity to taste these varieties in terms of a dial down alcohol by volume, so you're really getting the characterization and uh, nuances that you might not get if this was say 13.5 or 14%. So that's a really great thing to experience. So this wine spends 12 months in 35% uh, new French oak. And so I do like the split of 64% Merlot, 36% Cabernet Franc. Now this wine to me is characteristically not going to be the uh, Bordeaux varieties you're gonna get from say, uh, you know, Napa Valley, Alexander Valley, Washington State, France, etc. It is its own provenance. It's its own way of creating a beautiful wine that I think is quite exquisite. That I think this is a really beautiful wine showing the uh, the land, the region of Virginia. So for me, this is a uh, true testament of what you get from Virginia. It's not trying to be anything other than it is. And I think that is the important thing to call out here. So this is not going to be, say, a Merlot coming from Caneros in Napa. Um, I think sometimes the Bordeaux uh, varieties coming from Napa are so idealized. It's a great compliment to Napa, right? You want uh, some really fine, beautiful fruit coming through and showing what that region can do. Now, it doesn't mean that is the, uh, the highest level of uh, fruit being produced anywhere. It's just a really beautiful expression, but also Virginia is too. So again, it's not to throw one region under the uh, proverbial wine bus, so to speak. So this is really calling out some really beautiful uh, cuts of pork, such as maybe a pork belly, uh, pork chop would go really well with this, pork loin. Because I love, there's a sense of near tartness, it's not a tart wine, it's not a sweet wine, it's a dry wine. But, uh, you know, some characterizations that get me to that level, that get me to that pairing. Uh, but it can also be enjoyed on its own. So first time characterization, flavor profile, and the point score. So on this one I'm getting notes of red cherry, tayberry. Tayberry being that uh, beautiful brambleberry that's a mix of uh, the blackberry and the raspberry. Uh, also notes of dense forest, plum orchard during fall time, and uh, finally notes of uh, leather and suede. Next is the flavor characterization, then the point score. So this wine is giving a notation of mix of red and black bramble characterization, dark cherry, bay leaf, thyme, hint of baking spices. This wine is a 9.2 out of my 10.0 scale. So I'll put more information on the producer down below and also list your questions and comments there. You can also do that on the variety of social medias I'm on, such as Facebook, Twitter, Google+, Pinterest, LinkedIn, as well as Instagram and WordPress. And stay tuned for more, many more wine reviews to come. So do me a favor, give a like to this video, share this video, subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so already. And uh, again, thank you for watching this video. Stay tuned for many more videos to come. Salud!